That's right. Another day, another dollar. Oh, wait a minute. I don't really have a job, so I don't even get the dollar. <laughs> How you doing, everybody? It's Henry. And Mowers and Blows! Good morning. It's actually close to uh, 11.30. <laughs> Whatever, man. Anyway, as you guys saw yesterday, I had a very, very busy and productive day. Um, I got this off the street thanks to a tip from my buddy, Hank the UPS guy. We went to go pick it up in Northport, Long Island, which is the next town over. It wasn't far at all. Easy load, easy unload, and even better, easy fix. This uh, mower had a sign on it, it said free runs needs work. Well, this, uh, this little sign here was true to its word because it indeed ran when I got home. When I took it home, I put a battery in there, brand new, so I'm in it for $28 at least right now, right? Uh, and all it had was uh, debt problems. The cable driven PTO engagement cable was done and so I basically took it off of that second um, carcass of crap that I got from Nick from Metro. That it was also a cable-driven PTO. So I just took that cable off and put it on this one. Loosened up all the spindles and pulleys here, changed the belt with another one that I had that was in a little better condition, not a lot better, a little better. And then I grinded down the crap on it, the, the grass, the leaves, the dirt, the mud, whatever, and the rust, and uh, gave it a re uh, new paint job. We put it on, it works fine. So today, by the way, did you guys check out that seat? The seat is flawless, man. So look, um, I was thinking about this yesterday. There's not a whole lot of rust around there. The only rust that you really see that's noticeable is right around the footwell areas. So here's my dilemma, right? I can remove this foot pad and just use Rust-Oleum Dark Hunter Green, and that seems to be the best match for the original uh, OEM green from the Craftsman. I could go buy the Duplicolor version, which is the exact match, but that's like a lot of money. It's like $20 a can or more. Or the Rust-Oleum Hunter Green can go on here. Problem is, it's a little bit lighter than the stock green. So it's gonna be kind of noticeable. Well, Henry, it's kind of noticeable if you don't do it. And there's a solution right there. You're right. It is noticeable, but it's even more noticeable if you don't do it. So, can I do? You gotta do it! So I gotta uh, power wash this thing in the backyard. It's got a lot of oil around the base of the uh, engine. Don't know why. I'm not gonna find that out until I power wash it, right? And then run it a bit and you can see where the leaks are coming from, if there are any. It could just have been overfilled. A lot of people overfill their oil and it comes out It comes out the breather tube, you know? And it makes a mess. I'm gonna power wash it later after I mow my rear lawn with this first. Then you power wash it, right? They're gonna remove these foot pads and I'm gonna give it a once over with some green paint to cover it up. And then uh, maybe do some um, quick color black touch up around this area just to make it look even better right wheels hold air and uh i can either give it an oil change the oil is bad but not terrible but the good part is the oil is at half which means i could just put in another quart to mix with the old oil or i could just drain the whole thing and put all new oil in I guess since the engine runs so well, I should just do that. I should just give it an oil change. Maybe I'll do the oil change first. That's what I'll do. I'll do an oil change first. Use a screwdriver, you won't break the tabs. So I figure I'm gonna mow my lawn with this first and uh, that way it heats up the engine oil. It'll be easier for it to ooze out, you know, when I give it an oil change. And uh, as you can see, Quite a lot of stuff here so after I power wash it the stuff will just come off and it'll be ready to just go over it real quick with a splash you know just to cover it up I'll do kind of like a blending thing I won't even mask it off you know maybe I'll hold like cardboard right here and just go you know like a blend 
if you taped it off like, a, like a, a line over here, you're gonna clearly see the line. You're gonna notice it anyway because the paint doesn't really match, you know? Gotta do what you gotta do! Actually scratch that idea because uh, I've just mowed my lawn with that white outdoors the other day and you don't want to compact the uh, grass too much. So I'll just mow the rear, which means I'm gonna do an old change right now. So if you take a look here, first of all, it's uh, super oily, right? You can't even see where the plug is, right? It's just a mess. And uh, once you remove it, as you can see, you're bound to make a complete mess out of everything, right? So actually, my buddy Robert Nighthawk, when he came to visit, this was in the toolbox that he gave me. It's a quart fluid transfer pump. I'm gonna try this and just stick the hose in there and pump out most of the oil. That's what I'm gonna try. Instructions? No, I'm not gonna read the instructions. Straightforward. Got some kinks over here though. Gotta unkink it. Problem is I don't think this will reach all the way down there. You know what I mean? For sure, I don't think it'll reach. It's not gonna reach. So that's not going to work. I put this tube on this side. It doesn't look like you're supposed to though, see? Let me find another hose to connect onto this to make it longer. So I got this longer tube and now I'm pumping it. Check it out. Uh, I'll be honest, I, I was actually pretty surprised that it works. Because <laughs> it didn't seem like it was going all the way down, you know? Now, this is making it a lot easier to do the oil change. I mean, a lot cleaner for sure, you know what I mean? Could take a while for me to do this, but. Anything to save a mess. So that worked out kind of well. Uh, I kind of made a mistake. It's because I didn't read the instructions and I never do. This is actually designed to be placed in a quart of oil to pump the new oil in without making a mess. Well, why don't you just use a funnel and just pour it in? You know what I mean? So I used it reversely to get the bad oil out instead of putting the new oil in. So it seems to work pretty well. I mean, I still kind of made a mess because when you take the, the hose out, it's dripping all over the place and you're bound to make a mess. And then of course, uh, I guess you have to throw away the hose because it's still gonna be dirty. You know, you can't flush it out, it'd be too much trouble. So I just coiled it into a roll, put it in a plastic bag to use for next time. So, you know, I got uh, probably 90% of the oil out of there. I'll just add new oil now, that's all. So with conventional Briggs, single overhead valve engines, or with the flatheads, single cylinder, usually it's about 1.3 quarts of oil. Today I'm putting in some SAE 30 Plus for my friends over at Nice Oil Products. I'm just gonna put in one full quart for now, and then slowly add some while checking the levels in between.
I've got you here right around the brake assembly and I'm just turning it one quarter turn that uh, while the brakes work fine uh, it could use a one quarter turn of tightening and that's it that's how you tighten your brakes true test after you do a power wash is whether or not it'll start again water gets everywhere I didn't cover the carburetor or the gas cap. I always remember that when around the carburetor in the gas cap area, you don't put it close to it. You just spray it real quick like that. Hopefully then you wouldn't have to. Let's find out. While it's out here in the sun, drying off, I want to get the pads over here dried so I can just paint over it with some hunter green. Might as well take the lenses off and clean them. Just take your fingernail, push the tabs there, push the tabs here, push the tabs there, push your hands there. There we go. Clean your shit. Hey, I haven't said that in a long time, huh? So I've grinded that stuff down just as much as I could do. Now I'm just gonna frame paint it, you know? Go like that, cover up the black as much as I can. Like I said, the paint doesn't match, but close it's gonna get, you know? And I have the foot pads on. It'll hardly be noticeable. Do a little bit of blending. There we go. That's good enough. Just gonna put the uh, foot pads back on. And it's good enough. Better than before. Got some quick color, 98 cent black. Just a touch up.
cover up every rough spot that's there, give it the appearance that it's been taken care of. A little touch up here on the dash, just to make it look shiny. Covering up the gas tank with that magazine. Ideally, you want to do it without the wind outside. You want to do it like indoors. Whatever, man. It's just a tractor, right? Wind. That looks great. Check the oil one more time. Right on the money. So it took about 1.3 also, even for a V-twin, uh, a post twin. And now, right before you take the pictures, you dab some ATF all over it. Get the seat. Like new, baby. Like new. Oh, I dripped a little ATF in the lens there. I have to take that lens back out. Darn. Dang, son. Check that out. It's new, man. Little bit of ATF goes a long way. Crazy, right? Mailbag. Got a package from FedEx just now, and it's from Kohler. As you guys recall, I got a hold of one of those, well, two of them actually, from Motherload 27. Um, two Toro recyclers, one of which had the outdated or discontinued um, air filter cover where the two tabs are on the bottom and there's one single one on top. Well, I think they recall them or they discontinue them. You can't even buy that cover anymore, which I need to complete that, you know, uh, mower. So uh, the complaint was that because it's only one tab on the top, overuse and the wear, it pops up while pop, pops off while you're mowing, and then it gets st stuck underneath and you shred it, whatever. That's why a lot of people are missing them because they pop up easily. And uh, that was that. So I contacted Kohler. I says, "Hey, you can't even find that uh, cover anymore, man. How am I supposed to cover up my air filter if you don't make them anymore?" He's like, "Oh well, you gotta get the kit." the kit that converts it to the four tabs, two on the top, two on the bottom. And I says, okay, but then don't I have to buy the air filter base? He's like, yeah, you have to buy that too. I says, well, people who bought that Toro didn't sign up for that. That's your fault from designing that cover bag, right? He's like, I suppose. Anyway, I didn't hear anything from him for like a week, right? FedEx just delivered this box from Kohler. It's a box in a box. That's like getting two presents at once. As you can see, it is from Kohler. I get to open two. 
I got this knife from uh, Bobby and Larry. It's very sharp. It was like a free sample from something. Thank you. So what do you think, huh? You think that guy was like, uh, it's one of those pain in the asses. He's going to file a class action lawsuit if I don't send him this. <laughs> it's just the way it is, man. You've got to milk the system sometimes. Brand new air filter with gasket and some little black thing, which I don't know what it is. Instructions. Get out of here. We don't need any instructions. And air filter base with the accompanying four tab air cleaner cover. So now I can fix my, I can complete my Toro recycler with a new cover. Free! Shout out to James Strempler from Kansasville, Wisconsin for buying a couple of the new version stickers. Also to Robert Lett, AKA Jungle Bob, over in Birmingham, Alabama for buying the new version stickers as well. They're coming out to you real soon. Roll Tide! Boomer Sooner! So there it is. From getting a tip from Frank the UPS guy to picking up this free tractor. Runs needs work. We did the work. And uh, Tightened up the brakes one quarter turn on the adjustment. Just put a brand new battery in there. I'm in this for $28. Uh, put ATF all over it after we power washed it. We gave it an oil change. I took the deck off, cleaned it up, repainted it, greased it, put a new belt on there, stole a PTO engagement cable from my other one, put it on here. I just mowed the back lawn with this thing runs just great that 18 horsepower bridge over uh, the Briggs uh, opposed to an engine runs just great it didn't do a thing to it um, did power wash the entire area cleaned up the headlights over here pumped up the tires look at that seat that seat looks brand new so now I'm ready to take some pictures on the lawn now after it's been nicely shined up with ATF how much should I ask for it 675 and then settle for 550 or even five you know but being that we're in that season where they want baggers it probably won't sell this season i don't think it will it's okay i'll park this in the backyard for the winter mow the lawn until it gets cold run out the gas good for storage this free lt1000 from craftsman has been very cool Got it running, driving, and mowing on the first day. Buttoned it up. Now it looks great to list. Thanks a lot for joining me on today's pick, fix, and flip uh, episode. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. John over here at Turning Wrenches, and uh, we'll see you guys next time on Bowers of Blowers.